Hey, what's going on everybody? Today we are going to set up a network management system, more specifically Libre NMS. And if you're unfamiliar with what an NMS is, it's basically like network monitoring. You can also kind of think of it as a network monitoring system. I believe there's a few different um, actual definitions of NMS, like network monitoring station, network management station, network management system, etc. But the basics are pretty much all the same. Basically, it is something or some kind of server that you set up um, in your network that pretty much just monitors and takes uh, statistical information, hardware information, uh, whatever from all your other networking devices using what's called SNMP or Simple Network Management Protocol. And there are some NMS uh, servers that will use other protocols besides SNMP, but by and large, SNMP is what you're going to use for one of these systems. And what it does, let's just say, hey, this is the server that we're setting it up on. So this is our NMS server. Um, all of our other devices are going to be configured with SNMP where they can be accessed by the server. And they're going to send all their information uh, back to it, be that CPU usage, temperature, bandwidth usage, etc., etc. Basically, whatever um, SNMP allows uh, to be monitored on that device. Now, if a device doesn't support SNMP, you can still kind of probe devices with an NMS, like just ping them, make sure they're still online. But pretty much the server is going to be set on some kind of interval where it's going to go. It's going to pull a device, be like, what's your, uh, what's your statistics right now? And it's just going to put them all into this database where you can view them very nice and neatly. Now, why would you want to view any of this or why do you need it all to be in one place when you could probably just log into each of these devices and see it anyway. Well, say you want to be alerted if a device goes down. You can configure it to send you an email if it notices a device that should be online going offline, or it can alert you if there is way too much bandwidth being used. If you are having network issues, you can pull it up and kind of see which device is using what bandwidth, see where the problem areas are very easily. But it's kind of very hard to visualize all that on a whiteboard, so let's go ahead and download Libre NMS. And this is just one of many uh, network management systems. Just personally, this is my favorite because number one, it's free and there's no limit on how many uh, devices you can manage with it. Now there are other probably much better options like SolarWinds and PRTG. However, those are very expensive once you get past the uh, very limited trial uh, features. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to downloads. And the easiest way to get started is just with a virtual machine. So let's go to OVA images and download uh, this. Now the OVA can be used with VirtualBox, which is how we're gonna set it up now, but you can convert this into um, other hypervisors if you wish. I actually run mine on Hyper-V, and I do plan on doing a video kind of on that later where we convert different images between different uh, hypervisors. But for now, we're just gonna set it up in VirtualBox. And once that is downloaded, since we already have VirtualBox installed, um, go check out my video on getting started with virtual machines if uh, you're not completely sure how to do that. But all we have to do is double click on this OVA file and say, yep, we want to open it with VirtualBox Manager and it should import the appliance. Well, it's going to ask us if we want to change any of the options, but let's just look through here. It wants to use one CPU with 512 megabytes of RAM and everything else looks good. Let's just hit import. Now, if you're wanting to manage a lot of devices with this, 512 megabytes of RAM is probably not gonna be enough. Um, mine that I use on Hyper-V, it's allocated dynamic memory, and it'll shoot upwards of 20 gigabytes. Basically, whatever RAM you allow this to use, it's probably gonna use it. But once that's imported, all we gotta do is just double click on it, start it up, and let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger. Scale mode, there we go. All right, and once we're booted up, it's gonna hit us with the login screen, which the default user is Libre NMS, and there is a default username and password, which if we go back to the downloads page and pull up the installation guide, um, let's search the page for password, that's not it. So let's go back to the downloads page, and we're going to click on documentation next to the virtual machine area. And there should be, yep, down here at the bottom, there is the access credentials. And you can see we have different credentials for different areas. And one of them 
the web UI. This is what we're going to be using to actually manage our devices. SSH, self-explanatory, and then our database password. And since we are in the device console, we're going to be using the SSH credentials. Um, I don't believe I can copy and paste them into VirtualBox, so let's go ahead and make this smaller. And we're going to use LibreNMS as our login, and the password is going to be CDNE. 3FWDFDS. And now we are in and we can change that SSH password if we want to. Um, not going to. But let's go ahead and see what our IP address is with an IF config or an IP dash A, not dash A, IP A. And our device number two looks like we got an address, oh, 10.0.2.15. So what this tells me is that we're using a virtual box adapter because that is not any of my networks. And for this to work, it needs to be on one of the networks or at least have access to the networks that we're trying to monitor at a bare minimum. So what we're gonna have to do is shut it down and change the networking options in VirtualBox. And now that it's shut down, let's open up the device settings here and go to network. And right now we're attached to a NAT adapter. We don't wanna be on that. We want to be on a bridged adapter. Let's go ahead and click OK and restart that machine. And once we're booted back up, let's go ahead and log back in here with that same SSH password and do another IP A. And you can see now we have an IP address that's actually on the network, which is 10.88.13.150. And that is the address that we can browse to. So if we bring our web browser back up, and just go to 10.88.13.150, we should get LibreNMS login page. And the default login. Again, is going to be LibreNMS. Let's go back to our uh, access credentials and we're going to use the one for the web UI. So we'll just go ahead and copy that, paste it into the password field and log in. And now we are on our dashboard of our completely blank LibreNMS installation. So where do we go from here? Well, first off, we need to add some uh, devices that we can monitor and that involves setting up SNMP on the various devices which we wish to monitor. And this is going to vary um, quite a bit depending on what it is you want to monitor. But the bare basics is you're either going to set up SSH version 2 or version 3. And, and there's really only a few things you need for each of those versions. But check on which version is supported by your device and the specific commands. But to add one, let's go into the devices, all devices. We already have one which is localhost and that is this server itself. And if we take a look at that, we can kind of see some of the uh, options that we're going to get with pretty much any other device that we add. You can see we have our physical memory, virtual memory, uh, storage monitoring, our root device is 57% full. We've got all these recent events from the syslog. If we go over to our graphs, we can see some pretty graphs for our various uh, statistics. Um, these are pretty much all going to be blank at this point because it needs some time to really fill out. Yeah, we got health, like memory, disk usage, blah, blah, ports. This is where you can see the bandwidth usage. You can see this is our main port. Nope, oh, we're getting 404 not found on that. This is something that happens in LibreNMS that I kind of struggle to fix. Uh, maybe I'll have some more information someday on what exactly causes this, but sometimes certain links just go to 404 not found, even though they do exist. But like clicking on that should take me to a graph page, but it's not. So let's just go ahead and add a device in here. And and since this channel primarily revolves around Unify and uh, edge routers, we'll just go ahead and add in a Unify switch. So I'm going to bring up my Unify controller here. And I'm going to monitor my uh, December Illini office switch. So to enable SNMP in the Unify controller at least, let's go to Settings, Services, and there is a area here for location and contact for our SNMP uh, information. Now, this isn't enabling SNMP, but it's a good idea to put something in here like where the thing is and who to contact. And if we apply those changes, then that updated those parameters for that device. The actual SNMP configuration is pretty much done globally in the Unify controller, and that's under the main settings uh, system. And I think it's under, nope, advanced features and advanced gateway settings. And if we scroll down to the very bottom, we got a section for SNMP 
And right now I have SNMP version 3 enabled, which I recommend using SNMP version 3 wherever possible. But let's go ahead and disable that. And we'll start with SNMP version 1 and 2C. And basically to monitor something with version 2, all you gotta do is enter a community string. We'll just call it my community string, all one word. We'll do apply changes. And if we go back to LibreNMS, we can go to our devices uh, drop down, go to add device, and we can put in the host name or the IP of the device we want to manage. So if you have DNS set up to actually use host names, or if you can browse to your devices using the host names, then by all means use that. Um, if you don't, then you will need to use the IP address. So let's go ahead and find the IP of that device. Um, I didn't catch it. Uh, 13.90. So if we put in 10.88.13.90 here, we're gonna use SNMP version 2C. We can put in the port, which would be 161. However, that's the default anyway. Um, if we change that port, we would need to specify it here. And then for community, we're gonna put in my community string. Let's go ahead and hit add device. And it's going to ping it and try to add it using port 161. Now, if you get an error here, you can do force add. That's just gonna add it whether or not uh, the server can see it or not. Sometimes you have to do that. Most of the times you don't. But what we just did was add another device to our monitoring system, and it has already uh, detected that it is Unify, thrown in that icon, nice and beautiful. And it says that there's 25 metrics that it is monitoring. And you can also see that the location says my house that we put in when we first went into the controller. Now, if we bring this up, we can see all of the statistics here. We got processor usage, 10%, memory usage, 52%, and the recent events. And if we go to the ports, here's all the ports on that switch. And Libre NMS is actually going to pull a lot more ports than physically are on the device. A lot of them are useless, like all of these down here, link aggregate five, six, seven, eight. This is pretty much all the ports that that device could support. And this is whether or not they're configured or anything's plugged into them or anything like that. So you'll wanna narrow it down to pretty much just the ones that are important to you, which with a switch like this is probably just gonna be port zero, one through eight. And I do already have these kind of labeled. So this is the downstairs AP. Uh, so this is the downstairs AP port. And here would be the graphs for the bandwidth in and out. Now, while I'm here, I am just going to delete this device. And we're gonna set it up us using uh, SNMP version three, just to kind of show the little bit extra that's required here. Uh, let's go back to settings, advanced features, advanced gateway settings, SNMP. And we're gonna disable version one and two and enable version three. And we're gonna say the username is going to be toasty and the password's just gonna be password one, two, three, four. And we'll apply the changes. Now, if you're familiar with SNMP version three, uh, there's a few more um, configurations that you might notice are missing. Usually you have the uh, authorization password, the privacy password, uh, authorization, um, hash or encryption, privacy, hash and encryption. There's quite a few settings uh, here that are just implied with this Unify device. Many of the other networking devices you set up, such as like a Cisco switch or an edge router, you're gonna have to specify uh, these other parameters. So this is a very basic version three setup. But if we go back to our add device in LibreNMS, we're gonna change the version to version three, and you can see we get a lot more options. So. We're using the same IP, same default port, and these settings are where we have to make the assumptions of what uh, Unify uses by default. And just because I've already set these up before, I know that it uses um, authpriv, and the username is gonna be what we set, which is toasty, and the authentication password is gonna be that password we set, password one, two, three, four. Now the authentication algorithm is actually gonna be SHA, and our crypto password is going to be the exact same. One, two, three, four. Unify sets both of those passwords automatically when you configure it. And the algorithm for the crypto is gonna be AES. So at this point, if we go ahead, add device, you can see our device was added with SNMP v3. And we're gonna get all the same statistics that we had before. And like I said, just use version three wherever possible. The uh, security of it is way higher than version two, because like you just saw, all you have to know is the com community string um, for version two to monitor a device. 
with version 3, you've got to know the username and the password, yada yada. But not all devices support version 3, or not all devices play well with it, so your mileage may vary. Now, before we end off here, I'm just kind of going to go over the main uh, settings for Libre NMS. Um, always a good idea, change your password, you can change how, how it looks. But one of the main things that you're going to want to look at is the validate config option. If you click on that, it's going to run a check of the system and see if everything is running okay. And the main warning you're going to get is that your install is over 24 hours out of date and to make sure your daily.sh cron is running. And this is done on the server using SSH. So let's go ahead and bring that back up. Um, if we just do a list of our uh, default directory here for the Libre NMS user, you can see, well, I can't highlight it, but we have a daily.sh. So if we run sh daily.sh, then this is supposed to update our system. And that uh, script is supposed to be in our uh, cron jobs. But you can see I just tried to run it and we got a source not found and a syntax error. Just the straight daily.sh. And that was my problem. I was trying to run it the wrong way. And that is pretty much everything you need to know to set up Libre NMS. If there's any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. Now, there are a few more features to this that I plan to go over in uh, future videos, such as the Weather Map plugin. But uh, for now, we'll just leave it at this. And uh, as always, happy networking.